Hello my soccer universe, of course I'm gonna do a Serie A review video. I've been having talks in my previous videos that I might certain videos will only come out every two weeks. Yes, I skipped a week, I was sick. Serie A will be the one that I very very likely will give you every week. It is my favorite league. And, the, and with me wearing the Milan jersey, you already know that Milan did really, really well over these two <laughs> weeks. And yeah, at the moment they are even clear up top, which is something I never had expected. I'm wearing the 98-99 Milan home jer jersey because I, this season starts to remind me of that one a teeny little bit. And you know already that the 98-99 is probably my favorite Serie A season because it was a big title fight in there and because it ended up in on very unexpected circumstances that Milan actually became the championship but there are so many good things happening in that season it was also a season uh and we should go back to the 21 22 but uh so uh, just one thing where the title race there was only Milan of the big three in there Juve were nowhere and in uh, Juve was not good and you and Inter were absolutely nowhere so uh just to uh top this off as I said it was a great two weeks for Milan, uh, not always great performances, one also has to say. It was absolutely stellar in Naples, although I wish that with a little bit more clinically uh, fin finishing one could have probably settled the tie earlier. Um, and it was not good this past weekend against Empoli. Uh, we also, you know, so this is for me the main, the, the main story, but we also, and they are creeping up on us. Do not sleep on Juventus. Do not sleep on Juventus. While the top three are still very firmly having the grip on this title race. They cannot slip up much further. Because so Juventus keep on winning. Even without a certain Vlahovic. Who, is the, who they are more or less saving now for um, the Champions League match against Villarreal. Um, and of, uh, kind of a neg negative story. Atalanta is suddenly kind of a little bit falling away. Only one point in those two uh, two weeks, and so uh, yeah, they might have to stave off even the Roman competition uh, in uh, in a way. But I would say we'll run through uh, the important matches that I thought. I mean, I give you proper proper mo most of the results. Uh, it started off on the fourth with a pretty big win for Inter, five nil over Salernitana, which was basically uh, they had not been scoring for a long time and so it was kind of needed that they really may make a statement and, and I thought that this 5-0 over Salernitana, Salernitana side that has been actually quite good will in a way set up thing, uh, things so that Inter in the end will again uh, be the clear challenger uh, for the title. Um, Yes, they played Liverpool in the mid mid week, but it was not necessarily a, thing, a sign of things to come. Lauter Martinez scoring actually a hat trick, and then Edin Dzeko scoring two in that one. Um, we have Udine beating Sampdoria 2 1. Sampdoria not having a good uh, two weeks either. Roma actually, and that was so surprising, getting a deserved win over Atalanta. I think the 1 0 is about uh, right, but I was really disappointed by the, the performance that Atalanta gave. And then they had this great performance uh, later on um, against Bayer Le Leverkusen in, in, in Europe. But the Tam Tani Abraham goal after Zaniolo is, is, is assist, and uh, Roma looked actually quite steady. Yes, they have already beaten Atalanta in, Ber in Bergamo still. To me, this was, 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 was a surprise. Also, Lazio are having a rather good 3-0 uh, performance uh, at Cagliari, a Cagliari team that you thought they are actually coming and building some, some momentum, and Lazio completely crashed that one. Um, we had then a couple of new news between Genoa and Empoli and Bologna, Torino, um, Fiorentina, Verona actually saw that game. It was a very, very uh, entertaining first half with Piontek, more or less with the first chance of the game for Fiorentina scoring uh, the first goal in the 10th, 10th minute and Caprari in the 20th getting the equalizer. And the longer the game went, it was really an, uh, entertaining at, at the beginning, back and forth. And then the longer the game went, the more it stalled. And in the end, uh, it, it was pretty clear. It's a 1-1 draw. The Fiorentina were pushing for more. To me, that also more or less means, unless they do something in the cup, that Fiorentina will have a tough time 
getting into Europe via the league for sure. Venezia seem like at the moment a team uh, destined for re relegation of one four loss at home to Sassuolo and then Juve 1-0 over Spezia. Nothing to write home about except that Morato gets the goal, uh, which he doesn't uh, do too often, but um, another win. That's the most important story here. Juve play dull, play boring, play efficient. Very Juve-like. Very Allegri-like. But the big one on the previous weekend was, of course, Napoli's performance against Milan. Uh, the early exchanges definitely belonged more to Napoli. I think for the first 20 minutes or so, Napoli uh, really put pressure on Milan in a raucous crowd at the uh, Maradona Stadium. Uh, I gotta say, I mean, it was billed as uh, 2v1 or 1v2, but... Um, at that point, it was not anymore because Inter had, had one, but it was uh, probably the biggest game left for Napoli in the calendar. And it definitely showed. And uh, Napoli, especially Milan, had tons of trouble containing Victor Osimhen. However, the longer the game went on, the more um, Milan could take control of the midfield. If you have Kessie, if you have Benazir, and if you have especially Tonali, you always going to dominate the middle of the park and so they forced Napoli on the outside where admittedly they were dangerous and yes uh, Milan only has at the moment uh, the side with Theo Hernandez and Rafa Leao the, uh, the left side the right side is kind of uh, yeah Achilles heel and this is where Napoli tried to attack uh, them um, and, and as I said Victor Osimhen a constant threat this is an excellent excellent player however the attacking master plan for Milan was Equally excellent. The way that they started neutralizing Napoli and uh, relegating them to the outside where they were quickly absorbed, I thought was wonderful. And especially in the second half when uh, Calabria shot, kind of a little bit miss hit, uh, is deflected in by Giroud. Fully on purpose, but it, it, it looked really more like a deflection. Right after the half, 1 0. I was lying here, uh, here in bed watching the, that game, feeling really mi mis miserable. That goal made it instantly better. And then I gotta say, for the next at least half an hour, Milan allowed nothing from Napoli. The only thing that I can complain about is that Milan did not make the second goal. Other than that, they absolutely controlled uh, Na Napoli. And even thereafter, yes, Ozeman once had a kind of a shot from an acute angle and so on few things here and there, but there was nothing really that the ad was worrying. It was very, very routinely played defensively. And that's with a defense with Kalulu and Tomoro. And Kalulu, uh, who I think was uh, kind of uh, um, hired as an uh, outside defender, he's becoming a center back of the highest standard. I mean, absolutely amazing. So huge win for Milan. Of course, Salih Mekas needs to make it 2-0 uh, on that counter-attack. This is the one, the one thing they kept Napoli too much in the game. You could have killed off the game. And with a second goal, you could have actually won the head-to-head -head for the season, which could prove crucial. In any case, it's an absolute humongous win for Milan. One that actually can cemented them as a co-favor status. And at this point, you really have to say that um, I don't think that Napoli do, ha do have it. They, they have it, but I think mentally Napoli is not strong enough to challenge for the Scusetto because they are not picking up the points against the big teams. On the other hand, Milan, they're picking up the points against the big teams. They have the best uh, points per game against the big teams this season. However, it's the small teams where I'm worried about because there, and this is very, is very much 2000s Milan, where uh, in the big games they're there and they switch off in the other ones. And that's why uh, this, this great Milan team under Angelotti has only won one Scudetto. That and, you know, a little bit Calciopoli and whatever thrown in as well. But I, I, there was definitely something about that. Okay, moving over to the past weekend. We had actually a rather entertaining 2-2 between uh, Salentana and Sassuolo. Spezia beating Cagliari. As I said, Cagliari not looking good uh, for, some, for, for, for some reason, but you can be sure that we'll give it their all uh, the next weekend. I'll tell you who they, 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 they were playing. Uh, a team near and dear to my heart. Juve, another rather unremarkable win. Yes, they were 2-0 up. Yoshida with an own goal and Morata again. Morata scored and also the winner uh, laid on. But in between, Sampdoria um, missed a penalty through Cantereva and then got it to 1-2. 
We're pressing to get the equalizer and then Morata hits, he hits him on oh, the counter. Morata scored three goals in two games. This is a, a stat that is not, not to be dismissed. Juventus not looking good, but getting the wins. But this is the same thing I can say about Milan. Against the small teams, and, I, and, and, and it annoys me so much. To, to it also annoys me that they again were playing in the all black jersey. Although I have to say, the jersey itself is not great, but the kit looks good. I got to give it, but I hate black against white match matchups in a way. In any case, uh, Milan really, for 20, 20 minutes, look a little bit, then turn, 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 then, then turn around, have a few chances. I think Florenzi had one that got saved away. Of course, Leao got in there that as well. And then, and then after the corner kick, uh, strikers finished by Kalulu. Again, the Frenchman scoring uh, the winner for, for Milan from outside of, of the box. He just saw, okay, they are, so, and, and puts it in. Then you control the game. Then you almost lose control of the game, and then you cannot decide the game. And this is, again, the thing that already, already, is not, that the one thing where I don't think that Milan is yet championship material is exactly those weaknesses that uh, you, you take the lead, you do the stuff, but you do not back it up. You need to score a second, you need to score a third, you need to be a little bit more serious. Fortunately, Empoli had never had a shot on goal and were weak enough that uh, they didn't score. Um, it was not like against Spezia, where Milan then threw away the weighted points, although, yes, the referee helped it. Um, I will talk about where I talk, 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 talk about them. I mean, what speaks for Milan is that Milan have actually done the work in many ways, but poor refereeing decisions, uh, uh, have, having to have them less points than uh, they actually should have. Then Fiorentina wins the kind of Apennine derby against Bologna, 1-0. Uh, Napoli, uh, two Osimhen goals uh, at Verona. Uh, I mean, they already had a 2 to nil. Victor Osimhen, really, he is the real deal. Uh, Faroni pulls one back, uh, but then two red cards for Verona make it really hard to come back. Uh, Atalanta, 0-0, uh, only against Genoa at home. Genoa, uh, if you look at the standings, they have 16 draws and only one win. That's, that's also a surefire way to go down. They don't lose that often. But they also they don't win at all. And so, yeah, Genoa having a good run of games with draw, 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 draw. But they need to turn this into win if there's any hope of surviving for them. Uh, Roma, again, leave it late. Uh, the one thing, there's one consistency about Roma. Their performances are up and down. But at least they score late goals. They often uh, salvage them points, which they happen in uh, a Pellegrini penalty in the 94th minute. But uh, Roma needs to really look, have a deep heart think, how can we get our performances more consistent? Because you beat Atalanta. And Atalanta is also very, very, very much up, up, up and down. But it's so often that, uh, that, that, that we're talking here uh, that Roma, yeah, they snatched the draw in the last minute or they, or they got a winner. A winner is what Torino should have gotten against Inter. Uh, I actually didn't want to watch that game. I was preparing uh, videos in that evening. Uh, but then I decided, okay, let's have, have, have it on and listen to it. Torino should have won against Inter. Uh, they got a 1-0 through Bremer and then there was a stonewall penalty in the first uh, half. A uh, foul on, on, on Belotti with 2-0. Inter never come, 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 come back. Inter, second half. Yes, they tried, had a few chances, a few where I thought they go in, but also Torino had absolutely two sit sitters that it has to be 2-0. And I thought the entire game, yeah, this is one of the all those games that Inter will turn, turn around in the last five minutes. Well, not quite, but they dropped the points. I, of course, I would have loved it more if they would have lost because uh, uh, more points. But still, with those points dropped, uh, with, um, a very, very late equalizer through Alexis Sanchez. But with those points drop, Milan is now, even with Inter's game in hand, clear up top of the table. And then yesterday, Lazio, a deserved 1-0 win over Venezia. Um, however, it was only a penalty goal, but over, over, over they, were the, they were the better team. So yeah, uh, in the current standings, I mean, I've already said, Milan is now clear up top. But my model is still giving into the uh, favorite status, which I would agree with. What actually worries me slightly is that Milan have now four really, really winnable games in a row. 
But also exactly the games where whenever it was happening lately, where I don't trust Milan to win it. I have I I feel more confident that they will beat Atalanta or they go to Lazio and win that. I'm not so confident that they will uh, win all of these games coming up. If they want to become champions, they have to win these. Now, if we look look at the table, it's at the moment 63 Milan, uh, 60 Napoli, 59 Inter. Inter having the game against Bologna in hand, which uh, is not a given because Bologna can give you a hard time. But if I give those points and Inter have 6, 6 2, so it's a head to head between Milan teams with Napoli lurking in the background. However, um, it's a little bit shocking, but Juventus has 56 points. At the moment, they're only three points behind Inter and four points behind Napoli. They are just hanging about there, and if they keep up wrecking, uh, keep up winning, and getting on uh, those wins, it really seems like that Juventus could join back this title race, and they were done and dusted. Uh, I personally don't think. I think that the top three still have enough to hold of Juventus, but Juventus is this threat there. And if Juventus would win this league, I have, I have to say this would not uh, be a good indictment on uh, the Milan, Napoli and Inter. Because you, it is impossible to let this Juve team back in. Despite all the good signings that they have made, uh, if Juve should win that title, uh, this, would have been, uh, this would be a huge, huge upset. However, I do have a very strong feeling that the current top four will also be the uh, top four at the end of the season. Because Lazio is already at 49, 9 points, Atalanta and Roma at 48 each. It's going to be a tough ask to go in there. On the bottom, uh, things are also getting kind of clear at this moment. Um, uh, just one last thing, because I said I counted out Fiorentina. Fiorentina also have a game in hand, 46. If they would win that one, uh, they would move ahead of Roma and Atalanta. So the, probably they still have a chance for uh, um, a European finish. But just let's wait and see on that one. Yeah. Okay, and on the bottom, as I said, uh, Genoa <laughs> wins 16 draws, 12, 12 losses. Uh, it's just 9, 9, 9 points. It's a really hard, um, it will be a hard ask. Venezia also, with 2022, 20, 3 behind uh, Cagliari, despite having, have, having a game in hand. It looks like the current uh, bottom three are the ones going down. So I have... Um, Spezia is still implicated with 29 points, 8% chance of going down. Sampdoria with 26, also 8%. Then with Cagliari, 24%. And then uh, Venezia, 70. Genoa, 992. And Salantana, 98. So really not much uh, there. I think relegation seems to be decided as well. But up top, it's kind of exciting. So next games, we have Inter against Fiorentina. Napoli against Udine at home. And Cagliari then playing at uh, hosting Milan. And that's all on Saturday. Um, it's not, I know Milan have been consistently beating Cagliari, but it's not uh, a very nice, uh, very nice games. I think Inter Fiorentina is another sleep, sleeper game um, because, you know, Fiorentina can hurt you. So uh, that will be definitely interesting. Um, I also want to point out that we, of course, have the big one is on Sunday. It's only at 6 o'clock. It should be an if, 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 if evening game to me, but we have the Derby della Capitale between Roma and Lazio. Uh, the winner probably will qualify for the Europa League, but I think for you really need to win this one. I have a feeling it has a little bit draw written all over it with a last-minute goal for Roma. And then we're into international break. So yeah, let me know what you thought, what was happening in Serie A this weekend. Give me your thoughts. Uh, give me, of course, a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. <laughs> and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.